I have this dream where I'm walking as a young girl towards this woman. I can't see her face, but I instinctively know who she is. And just as I get close enough to see her, the door slams. I have to find this woman because I know she is my mother. Over 11,000 people who were born in Sri Lanka have been adopted overseas. So these are my adoption papers. It's all I've ever had with regards to who I am and where I came from. Many have grown up knowing very little about the parents and culture they left behind. There is a massive chapter of my life that's missing because I wasn't born Rebecca. I was born something else. Two women are now returning to find their birth parents. I need to know the story of the first three weeks of my life and why my mother gave me away. So I have returned to search for my mother, for my roots, and essentially for myself. They are searching not just for family, but for a lost identity. I've had so many rejection issues for so long, my whole life I've thought that I wasn't wanted at all. Excuse me, I'm looking for my mother. I can't leave without knowing. I'm looking for my mother. This is me. I have to find her. I have to find someone. Olivia, Luke, come on. Should we wake up? Leah! Okay, you're gonna have to start getting up, all right? We're gonna be late. Come on. Ah, there we go. Found them. This is the photo that was taken of me, I would say probably about three days after I'd been adopted. And this photo is the earliest record that I have of my life. Um, but prior to that, it's blank. Rebecca was adopted from Sri Lanka when she was just three months old. She now has four children of her own. So Olivia is my third chatterbox. And this is Luke, and this is my big boy. Not you, my big boy. Mm. And that's my naughty eldest teenager. And this is my little one-year-old. <laughs> Shannon, say hello. <laughs> See you, kiddos. Bye. So both of my adoptive parents moved to England in the 60s from Sri Lanka. And uh, they couldn't have children. So they came back to Sri Lanka in 79 to adopt me. I grew up a very precious only child and, you know, I had the lavish parties, nice holidays, always had the best clothes, best education. I had everything. But this was a community where adoption was a taboo. Um, it's never, it was never discussed. So, as a consequence, for the first eight years of my life, I thought this was it. This was my family. These were my relatives. So eight years old, back from school, and it was the ritual of having the bath on a Friday night. So I went up to get the towels. I came into my mother's room with something very similar to this, and there were a lot of clothes, but I noticed at the top that there were towels. And let's put my hand in to grab. There were papers, and grabbed onto all these papers that had come out, and I could see the word adoption on it. And I then could just see my name everywhere. I blamed my mother a lot for it. I, I kid you not, I blamed her a lot. Rebecca's adoptive parents are still alive, but she rarely talks to them, and never about her adoption. She did come to know about it, but then I told her, daughter, I'm very sorry, you're an abandoned child. If I know your parents, I would have taken you and shown them. This is the child God gave me. I loved her and I brought her up as my own. 
We work very hard to bring her everything. I want to give her the best education. That was the best thing I wanted to do for her. Everything that is best. As soon as I found this adoption order, I realised that my entire childhood had been fake. And I actually have a completely different family out there that I actually came from. And ever since becoming an adult, I have just been trying to find out who they are. Rebecca's husband, Anton, is also Sri Lankan and has been with her since she began searching. When I first met Rebecca, she said, I come with a lot of baggage. At that point, I didn't realize how much this would dominate our lives and how much it defines her as a person. The two of them are now preparing for their third trip back to Sri Lanka to find Rebecca's birth family. So, 10 years ago, we went back for the first time to search, and at that point in time, we went with all of these documents to the Colombo cults, and we came back out with nothing. Five years later, we went back to the two hospitals, one named on my birth certificate, one on my adoption order, but again, nothing. Now, the only place left for us to go to is the Registrar General's office. That's the vault of Sri Lanka that holds all information in terms of births, debts, and adoption registries and orders. And that will be the last thread of hope. But this trip will be the last one Rebecca and Anton can do together. Five years ago, um, Anton was diagnosed with motor neurone disease. When I found out, actually my world shattered. Last year, in fact, I started to notice that Anton's speech was becoming quite difficult for him and he was finding it difficult to walk. So this truly is my last search and I need to accept what comes. Adoptions from Sri Lanka escalated with the outbreak of the civil war in 1983. This bloody conflict raged for 25 years and created tens of thousands of orphans. European adoption agencies were quick to respond. They set up networks that allowed destitute families to hand over children they could no longer look after. More than 11,000 babies were given up and adopted into Europe, where they would begin very different lives. So this is the first ever piece of equipment I bought. And although it doesn't look like much, it's the real deal for me. And I absolutely love it. My name is Ria and I'm 26 years old and I've lived here since I was about three weeks old. Ria grew up in the Scottish Highlands and runs her own gardening business. So my parents couldn't have any kids of their own, um, so they, they went through a Dutch adoption agency to get me and brought me here, which is about 20 miles from Inverness and is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It was fine for me growing up and I enjoyed it, but I stuck out basically like a sore thumb. I was definitely one of the only brown people in my hometown, but I was completely happy. As a kid, I never thought about searching or even investigating my adoption. It's only recently that I've started to feel like I'm a bit stuck in between these two countries and what seems like two very different identities. I think it's kind of feeling like you don't properly belong anywhere in some way. And it doesn't necessarily really upset me, but it's, it's there. And I always wonder what my life would have been like in Sri Lanka. Ria lives with her girlfriend, Kat. They've been to Sri Lanka on holiday, but this is their first trip to search for Ria's family. 
So these are the documents that the Dutch Adoption Agency gave to my adoptive parents. It's all I've ever had um, with regards to who I am and where I came from. I'm sure that it was quite a traumatic thing. It's three weeks old to be taken away from my my mum and put in the arms of somebody else that smelled different and put in a plane and taken to the side of the world. Apparently I cried for six months after I arrived here. This, for me, was the most interesting piece because it gives me a bit of information about my birth mother. She was unmarried, she was illiterate, unemployed. The mother has given this baby for adoption as she and her family are not capable of supporting it. And I think this is quite significant, I think. Um, it says as a note, as the mother does not favour any further contact with her, it will not be possible to meet her again in any connection whatsoever in the future. And that caused quite a lot of emotion in me. I, I remember being quite upset by that. I think there was a feeling of rejection that came up and it has created quite a lot of questions. That's a picture of my birth mother. It's just a very bizarre feeling looking at that and knowing that that's me and that that woman gave birth to me and wanting to know if she's alive, if she thinks about me, if she does want to see me. And I feel like it would ground me so much if I knew. Like, it feels vital for me to get as much information as I possibly can. So I have to go back and search. There are 21 million people living in Sri Lanka. It's an island of isolated villages and dense cities. Finding anyone is a difficult task. So Ria has employed an investigator called Siri Silva to help her. Hello. I am Kat. That's Siri. Are you going? He specializes in adoption searches. So, I brought everything document-wise from birth certificates, medical reports, I took everything. And I brought the clothes that I arrived in, a little waistcoat and shorts. That's what I was wearing when I was handed over, apparently. Lamai <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca and Anton are in the capital, Colombo, for their third search. We've been here many uh, times before, but this time there is a certain air of anticipation and hope. I am spending pretty much every sort of waking, sleeping moment thinking my life might be so different in a couple of weeks. And it needs to be at a height that I can write at. Across yeah. there. Okay. Rebecca's starting point is the story she was told about how she was adopted. The story my adoptive mother told me was that I'd been found on a bench outside Lady Ridgeway Children's Hospital in Colombo. My adoptive parents were told by relatives in Sri Lanka that there was a child available and they flew out to adopt me. I was then subsequently taken from the hospital to the adoption court. But during the legal process, a new birth certificate was issued with only my adoptive parents' name on it, removing all trace of the woman who gave birth to me. 
Over the last 10 years, Rebecca and Anton have visited every place connected with her adoption, except the Registrar General's office. Yeah. So on this search, they are casting the net even wider. Uh, uh, how are you, my Fine. chance? Nimo is an old friend who's helping Rebecca. <laughs> He's printed out 2,000 leaflets telling her story. What does that mean? Please find out my mother. This is a leaflet which we are planning to distribute to shanties and towns where we think it could lead to more people coming out. This search is the last throw of the dice for me. If we don't achieve anything at the Registrar General's office, then we have to search island-wide. Rebecca's only got two weeks in Sri Lanka, so Nimal has already organised a press conference for that afternoon. So, 38 years and six months later, um, I have returned yet again to search for my mother, for my roots, and essentially for myself. Not a moment has gone by since the age of eight that I have not thought of my birth mother, nor of my extended birth family that live here in Sri Lanka. So a press conference is the only way for me to reach all the people island-wide because I don't know which part of the island I come from, which town I come from. So for all mothers who are hearing me, there is a number that you all can reach out to find me. When you're searching, you are largely dependent on luck. And the chance that someone reads a newspaper or recognises a face. And the only hope you have is to believe that something will happen to bring the two of us together. I never switch off when I'm here, never. I can't do that. I'm looking at people on the road, I'm looking at people in the cars, just looking to see whether you know, anyone looks familiar to me. Um, do they look like me? I think I'm just watching people and their way of life, thinking that could be me as well. That could have been my way of life. It's constant. It's absolutely constant. So this place that we're staying at is the perfect spot because we're just surrounded by nature and loads of plants that are really familiar to me. I'm feeling quite excited and I'm also feeling really nervous and a little bit sick a lot of the time because I don't really know what to expect. To begin Ria's search, Siri has asked to see her papers from the adoption agency. Can we sit here? Yeah. So, okay. Please. Ria has never shown these to anyone before. Let me see. Let me see your birth certificate first. Okay. Yes, this is the English one. And even your mother's name is mentioned, that's very good. Lul Alamul Dodangud. That's the address, isn't it? Of yeah, this is a small village, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think this is a small okay. village. This is look real because there are a lot of uh, fake things I found because these kind of papers, some are right, some are wrong. Does that happen quite a lot? Is that it's happening? quite quite a lot yeah. happening, yeah. yeah. Sometimes children are born in an illegal way, secret way, yeah? Mm. Having an affair. Having an affair. So what they do, the mothers deliver the baby, left the baby in hospital and mothers go home so then uh, adoption organization they get the baby and they give the fake papers for the court that's awful and i'm assuming that all these adoptive parents have no idea about no their no, baby. no no 
So that photograph might potentially not be my birth mother. Uh huh. I hope she's the right mother, but yeah, you don't know, huh? My God. The first thing, I want to be sure uh, whether you really born in this hospital, yeah? If you born in that hospital, you will see in the record books your name there. Yeah. yeah. And of course your mother name. Maybe you will find, maybe not. So before you start these things, you have to be prepared. In Siri's experience, almost half of all adoption papers contain false names or addresses. Minister admits illegal adoption trade. My oh God. Shit. All kinds of documents were falsified by adoption authorities, including birth certificates and the identity of biological parents. In some institutions, there were acting mothers who were paid to pretend to be the biological parents while handing them over. I think it's difficult enough being adopted but having all this. I think this news has totally floored Ria. She's got a lot of paperwork and it looks really legit and it's difficult to imagine that that oh, might have all been faked. When she gets overwhelmed, she has a tendency to just completely close herself off from everybody, including me. So I'm quite worried about what she's going to find out and how that's going to affect her. By the time Ria was born in 1991, adoption was a booming business. With thousands of European couples desperate for a child, lawyers and agencies were making millions from the fees they charged. To keep up the supply of babies, vulnerable mothers were targeted at hospitals and persuaded to give up their children. Documents were faked, and other women stood in at the adoption courts. European parents were often told that the birth mother simply wanted no further contact with the child. Ria's birth certificate says she was born at Kalutara Hospital. If it is genuine, it should match with the hospital's birth register. So busy. This is 1991, yes. yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But 1991 and June is missing. It's missing. Why is June? Some missing. Some damage at the very, very long time. It's a long time ago, she mm. means, and some documents are damaged, yes. you know? But the, the complete book is gone. The whole book is gone? Yeah, yeah. Is there one Especially. for July? Sir? Sorry? Is there one for July 1991? July 1991. That's 1989. 1989 or 1991. So you have births from 1991 in the book that says 1989. That's not the right year. Yeah. The information is just really inaccurate, yeah. isn't it? It seems to be just dates all over the place, and my birth could be somewhere by the looks of it, but it might be in 1981 for all from looking at that. It could be it's anywhere. Just, yeah. So is there a chance that my birth records could be fake? Is that what she's, does she, can you ask her that? Yeah, so she can't tell that because she not there. Yeah, she can't tell that. 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 She can't We 
when you're adopted, there's so much trust put in to the documentation that you have because it's, it's ultimately absolutely everything that gives you any identity and tells a story of who you are. If they're taken away, I've realised I have absolutely nothing to, to identify with and it basically it brings up the question in me of well, who, who am I and maybe I've been really stupid, maybe I should have questioned my documentation. But I've had nothing to give me any idea that things might not be the way that they seemed. I'm sensing that, you know, there's a lot more to the whole adoption process than I originally thought, so. And uh, that photograph. There's not one bit of me that thinks that's definitely my mum. I don't trust it at all. And that's a really strange feeling because I have trusted it to a certain degree until now. And now that, that trust is all gone. Hmm. No. Nothing in that. Okay, let's look at the dinner, Mina. It's been two days since the press conference. Um, a little disappointed that we haven't really seen anything in the press as yet. Um, the scale of the search is unbelievable. Today is a vital day in Rebecca's search. The Registrar General has finally agreed to look for her adoption file, number FC39. I know today is key because all my details should be in this file including my original birth certificate, probably even an original consent form from the mother. It should basically have every single paper pertaining to that court case on the 25th of July that then gets taken and archived in this particular location. I'm here to see the Registrar General through there. Thank you. After 10 years of searching, this is her last chance of finding any paperwork relating to her birth or her biological mother. Okay. So th thank you for seeing us. And um, I'm here because I'm trying to retrieve my adoption um, details. All we want from that file is, yeah. is there anything linking to Rebecca's biological parent. Yes. Don't you know her name or anything? Nothing. We know nothing. I tell you, if we have a name, I won't be sitting here. OK. If we have that the previous uh, birth certificate numbers, we can go that path, no? Fine. This is 7980 records, huh? This is the registry. Colombo, July 25th, 25th, no? 39FC, Colombo. No, there has not the previous birth. It's not registered. Could it be that it was registered, but no one submitted that certificate? Or she didn't, the mother didn't have the birth certificate to submit? Maybe she lost it. I don't Sometimes he may be the unmarried mother, no? So she don't want to register the birth and uh, she may be faced a lot of, we don't know. We can't wipe a person out of this planet and make them non-existent. There has to be something that leads to her dead or alive. Can you imagine every 18th of April, her birthday, she's thinking about her mother. Sorry. Seeing an actual book with my court case number on it 
but then to see a dash for every part of me that would have been my identity. It's like someone has completely erased my existence from this planet. I'm an invisible entity. I don't exist. I don't exist. A lot of people say to me that I should stop searching, that I should be grateful for everything that life in Britain has given me, but they've never had the childhood I've had. This is my adoptive mother. We didn't have a relationship. Our relationship revolved around school, homework and grades. I lived my life in fear. It was fear of not accomplishing. It was a fear of not doing the right thing. It was a fear of, you know, um, I don't know. It was a fear of everything. Maybe if I was happy as a child, I won't be searching as hard as I'm searching. My identity was all created for me by my adoptive mother and she made me into who she wanted me to be. Finding my birth family means I go back to that primal root of who I actually am. I will not be able to form myself from what it actually truly is, not what people want it to be. The next day, Rebecca's story finally makes the newspapers. This is me, and I'm looking for my Amma. With no official roots left, she must find her mother through word of mouth. Excuse me. Can I give you this leaflet? Yeah, thank you. My wife is looking for mother. That's it. She's there. The plan is to try and get to the bus station or the train station so that we can basically get these leaflets out to all the people that are travelling towards various areas. Because I think a lot of these mothers tend to come from outside of Colombo as well, deliver here and then go back. So I'm trying to target the crowd I can't really get to. There's a number here if you know anything. I'm not discounting anybody. I'm trying to reach out as many people in this island as possible. Because you don't know how you're going to miss someone. You're searching for that face in that crowd. Thank you, Amma. Thank you. Yeah, and if you know anything, that's the number to call. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking for my mother. This is me. So I'm just searching to see if I can find anyone. Rebecca, <laughs> come back. I'm looking for my Amma. If anybody on the bus knows, okay. By sunset, she's handed out 500 leaflets, but Anton's legs have given up. I've never been here on the streets doing this, and. I actually feel sorry for myself, if you don't mind saying. Because I'm here now, kind of like prostituting my <laughs> baby self to random people at the train station. But right now, I haven't got time. I haven't got time to think about that. I have to do my, what I'm here for. I can't leave without knowing who my mother is. I have to find her. Four days after visiting the hospital, Siri still can't confirm if Ria's documents are genuine. Uh, what are we going to do today? First, I try to check the address. Okay. Yeah? That's the address if, that's sorry? on the birth certificate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His only option is to search for the village on Ria's papers. 
but he doesn't know if it even exists. Yeah. Do you feel optimistic that we might find something uh, with, I, with all, everything that we yeah, have? I, we have no uh, clear address, we have no clear things, but I try my best, you know? This feels like the sort of last attempt, I guess. It's, it's not much more you can do if you don't have any, any records anywhere, so it's a case of taking what we have and, and actually going to the location and having a look. It's definitely scared of finding out the truth, because um, it's just been a mystery for me for my whole life. But I think there's a big part of me that wants to know if I was genuinely brought into this world with of love ultimately and that I was wanted and I've only had this paperwork to go by so I might be told a completely different story and that's quite a thought. The address on Ria's birth certificate is a village called Lulelemula, but it's not marked on any map. Oh, stop it. Sarah! Why are you going to the post office? We want to check the address. Is it the right address? If the village exists, it's a good sign that Ria's papers are genuine. Lul Alamulle Dramud. Kohidimi Lul Alamulla Dini. Lul Alamulla Kohidimi Dramud. Kohidimi Dramud. Kohidimi Dramud. So, yeah, Lul Alamul, that is the village. Okay. So, what we're going to do, we're going to the village and try to search her. Yeah? Sure, yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the direction to Lul El Mulle. Okay. Yeah. Lul El Mulle is only 40 kilometers from where they are now. Ama, me Lul El Lul Vela El Mulle. Lul El Mulle, I don't know. Better than. Better than. Better than. Better than. Ah, hari hari bongsu. Better. When you start physically searching for that one person that you've been thinking about all your life, everything you've ever known is suddenly at a tipping point. What if she's never wanted anything to do with me? Am I a complete idiot for thinking she might want to see me again? You've got all these fears and you're stepping completely into the unknown. Feeling quite anxious and kind of disbelieving that this is actually happening because the closer we get to the village, the more real it's starting to feel. Is this the village? Yeah. No. This is Lula Lula. In the village, Siri searches using the photo of Ria's mother and the family name of Ranasinghe. Sumitra Rana Singh ke liye kine. Hey? Phone number hai na? Well, uh, the man he's informed me we have to go straight on, and there are some people who knows uh, Rana Singh. There are few family. You can try there. But they know that the Ranasina family lives Some, some here. Some here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Recognition of the surname now makes it likely that Ria's documents are, in fact, correct. She could, in theory, be in any one of these houses yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Got something. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Your mother's sister mm -hmm. got married him. To him? Yeah, one of the family members. Ah. 
shall I go first and uh, to talk first? Yeah. 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 Just wait, yeah. Yeah. And come. Hey, that's the family. They said, come. Is my birth mother there? I don't know. You have to talk. Because there are few, few people there. Okay. Okay. Uh, what do you think? I feel physically sick. Yeah. He's a grandfather, the mother of uh, Sumitra. Do they know who I am right now? They, they know the st Do they, the do they know who I am? Yeah, yeah. Maybe She's I'm... the youngest uh, uncle in your family. So an uncle? Uncle, yeah. Brilliant. I took a brilliant now. Ria's adoption was never a secret. The whole family knew about her birth. Hi. <laughs> she has gone for the work. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Ria's mother is alive and will be home tomorrow. She, they said you look like a mother. Your mother, yeah. <laughs> you were born at 1991. They remember even. Time your mother gave an adoption, so she got some money to travel. So there was some money left, so they bought this. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, 26 years old. <laughs> Same as you are. Symbolizes me. Symbolizes yeah. you. Too. It's amazing. It's, I didn't expect to meet a whole group of people. And not before I met my mother. It's not just about me at all now, it's, it's a much bigger picture. <laughs> Give me a tour. Is this a bedroom? Yeah. Ria's family still live in the house that she was born in. Kitchen. Kitchen. Ah. You make all the food. What do you do here? Do you cook? Um, it's quite shocking to think of the difference between my life and what I've created in Scotland and what it would have been. It makes me feel that I'm extremely privileged and gives you a bit of perspective. <laughs> It's really exciting because I've always wanted to be able to look at another human and say, I can see that human in me, and I've never experienced that. Okay. Okay, let's go there. <laughs> On Siri's advice, Ria will wait until she meets her mother to hear the full story of her adoption. I've thought about this for so long. I've had so many rejection issues for, for so long. My whole life, I've thought that... I seriously believed that they didn't want anything to do with me and that I was, they were really ashamed to see people today actually light up and, and get emotional about having me in their space and, and around them. That's probably the, the most fundamental change for me. Yeah, tomorrow could completely prove to me that actually I was wanted and maybe it was a case of just not being in a position to have me around and that I can completely I can take and understand. In Colombo, Nima has continued leafleting. Some of the thousands of mothers who gave up their children are beginning to come forward. <laughs> Everything 
One woman's story exactly matches Rebecca's. So this is a potential grandmother that Nimal found, and um, this is the strongest lead we've had so far. This woman's daughter, who could be Rebecca's mother, died three months ago. Nimal has sent me a photo, and this is the photo of the potential or the deceased mother uh, who gave away the child. There is something in the eyes, there's something that just seems familiar to me. Um, and I can see myself, I can see myself being a part of this family, if you see what I mean. Mm. And I've never felt that before. I don't know, for some reason this time it's so much more different for me because I truly do want it now. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it for so long. been looking for so long. The woman lives in a shanty town an hour outside Colombo and has already given blood for a DNA test. I'm shaking my jaunty. I'm very nervous. Just like Rebecca, this woman has been searching for her grandchild for years. Machan says we are very thankful and glad to meet her. Ame, ame megula, me hamu ne gena kuda kistuti ante no. We are so glad we are meeting her and the family. Uh, Nima, can you just ask um, Ama what? Um, what actually happened in this story? the <laughs> <laughs> This is the first one. This is Luke. This is Olivia Krishni. And then little one. Yeah, Machan, tell her thank you. Thank you. Obviously, I'm going to get the DNA results, but I am semi-convinced, actually, but I'm just not 100% sure, um, obviously, because I don't want to let my own hopes down, but I feel, I feel a connection, if that makes sense. It will be five days before the DNA results come back. I'm, I'm writing this letter to give to my birth mother. I don't know what my, the meeting's gonna be like and how she's gonna feel, so, and I want her to have something that she can keep um, for as long as she wants, basically. I want her to know exactly how I feel 
even though I don't know her, I do feel a lot of emotion when I think about her. Because I have, because I've invested so much over the years, it's built up all my life. So, yeah, there's, there all, already feels there is love there for her, even though I don't know her. Dear Sumitra, I can't quite believe that this day has come. For many years I thought about you, stared at the one photograph I own, and ached for an understanding of how I spent the first three weeks of my life. Simply being able to look into your eyes and know that you are my mother will give me so much comfort. Please know that I'm always with you. We may live thousands of miles apart, but that will never detract from the happiness I have, knowing that you are alive and well. With all my love and warmth, Rhea Sumi Sloan. Wait. Hello? Ah, Nangi? In? Go on, my name? Eh? I'm going to go on. Eh? I'm going to go on. Why you thought to see your mother? I was, because it, it was painful, and I want, I want, I could was thinking about her a lot and wanted to know if she was alive and. Who was my mother? Yeah. Real mother. Yeah, good act. Read in a car is a third part in a loop. Me a cow to make a tamma. See you again, hoya. So nobody can help because even her mother, father also poor. Tell her that I understand that completely. I have a document uh -huh. that said on it that my mum didn't want any contact with me, which is partly why I haven't searched, and I just wondered if that was true or whether it was just something that they wrote. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Tell her that I, not to feel any guilt or I have no anger or upset. I'm just happy to see her. <laughs> 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 I learned a word in Sri Lankan, one word. What? Amma. Amma. <laughs> Amma. Amma. <laughs> So the true story of my adoption was that my mum had been abandoned by her boyfriend when she was pregnant. She gave me to an adoption agency in Colombo and said she cried for three months afterwards. To know that this family has cared about me 
and remembered me is the opposite of every fear I've had. I've always been part of them, just as they are now all part of me. <laughs> it's a beautiful family. <laughs> Last thing if I would have. <laughs> I think it's a hugely healing thing for her to come back here. It feels like her energy is really, really light, like some pain in her is kind of lifted. I absolutely feel a massive weight off my shoulders. Now I know. His story all adds up and is accurate, and she's told me things that are on the paperwork that before I'd even shown her. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't see how it could be false. It's quite a different feeling when I originally thought that nobody wanted anything to do with me over here. It's a massive change. I'm happy. In total, Ria has six uncles and aunts. <laughs> a dozen cousins, a grandfather, and her mother. They have already invited her back to stay. I have no idea how this relationship will work from now on, but I know I will come back. And although Scotland and Sri Lanka are thousands of miles apart, I no longer feel stuck in between. I am now very firmly rooted in both places. Doesn't match. The mitochondrial DNA polymorphisms observed upon analysis of Miss Rebecca Parajasingham and Miss H.P. Christina did not match with each other. Feels like everything around us has imploded yet again. Yeah. I've already deleted all the pictures. Right? I've deleted everything. I can't. I have. I've deleted absolutely everything. I don't want to look at them again. So that bit's over. And we start again. There is a spin to this. Maybe somewhere in all this, fate doesn't want me to have a dead mother, you know? To have searched for this long and end up at a grave. Because something tells me this isn't it. I instinctively feel that when I was adopted, somebody began to grieve. And in the same manner that I've been searching, I really truly do believe my family has been looking for me 